You know, one of the things I was doing while I was standing over there is thanking God for all the seeds that have been sown from Morning Star Ministries. Let's do that. Let's thank him right now. Rick, the team, and, and so many have gone out from here. So just think how those seeds have been scattered and what all they have accomplished. But this is a different era, and I, of course, love the Hardemans, and being able to be with Chris and his wife is a real joy for me because this is just an awesome time that we're living in. I, I really, look at somebody and say, I'm just happy you're still alive. <laughs> and don't you love that gift of word of knowledge? I, I just love it, how it works. Let's thank God that the gifts are being stirred up again. <laughs> we all prophesy according to our faith. And then, of course, there's prophets that help in the government of the body. And, but the manifestation of how God speaks is just a joy every time we witness it. And so that's part of what this advanced prophetic gathering is about. Because what the prophetic is really about is expressing both the heart and the mind of God. See, it's not just telling truth. It's saying, my heart feels this way about you. And I love how we saw that demonstrated tonight. And I also love Misty Edwards. Let's thank God for her one more time. Now, Chris said some things. Misty led us in some worship. And I feel like my role here tonight is to try to get us really focused in on how we fit in today, each one of us. There's not a one of you here that isn't special. God predetermines our time and our place. If you're here tonight, he put you here for a reason. Acts 17 says he predetermines your time and place. That means if you're at the right place at the right time, he pro-horizons you. That means you can see further into your future. And then the word goes ahead and says, and if you're at the right place at the right time, you can grasp for him and find him because he's very near to you. Let's thank the Lord that he's near to us tonight. Lots of turmoil going on. I've written lots of books about it. I remember uh, uh, writing one book back in the 90s where uh, I was... God visited me and showed me in 10-year increments what would happen uh, that led from uh, 1986 in 10-year increments through 2026. And uh, that book is very, very helpful today. Recently, when COVID began, I was asked by Charisma to write a new book called Prophetic uh, Passover Prophecies because of the season we're living in. Because this season is one of the most unique times in history. And you have to remember that if you're still here, there's a reason you're still here. And uh, you've been chosen for a time such as this. See, God's not in time, but we're in time. And we have to understand in time what the Lord is requiring for us. And maybe tonight I'll be able to help you some understand some of the things that's going on. You're in the midst of a great prophetic environment here. So you should be able to absorb things just by being in this environment. See, there's a spirit of prophecy that comes down. And right here in the midst of the spirit of prophecy, you're going to start hearing things you've never heard before. Not just a message, 
all of a sudden, the spirit of revelation is going to rest on you and be and cause a quickening to happen within you. See, the spirit of revelation and the spirit of wisdom, they're part of a manifestation that God does in our life. They're not the same. Revelation uncovers. Wisdom interprets in a way. Revelation uncovers, occult covers over. So you want to understand that that is one of the greatest wars that we're in right now is God's people walking in revelation and causing the occult that is so covering in the earth realm to be exposed. Now, Really, what it boils down to right now is your inheritance. Look at somebody and say, I have a good inheritance. That means you have a portion that you need to be grabbing hold of. And it, it boils down to this. You have a harvest and you have a field. And you have to know that in your harvest and in your field, there is a war. And right now, the war, go ahead, Aaron, and help me. That right now, the war is very intense in what is happening in your harvest and in your field. Recently, at our head of the year conference, we had a, um, uh, we always meet at head of the year Feast of Tabernacles time. And the Lord caught me up. And in catching me up on Saturday morning, he showed me something. And uh, I had several nations that were standing in front of us, and we were, uh, we had been worshiping, and a new song came down, and we were prophesying. And all of a sudden, when the Lord caught me up, he showed me what we look like going into this year ahead. And I began to prophesy. And he said, your shoes of peace this year will be swords. And all of a sudden I saw our feet and they were clothed with these incredible swords. And every place we walked, it created a divine division. Let's show that picture. Aaron, you're going to have to help me as we move forward. So you see it. See, this is a year that is really peace... Shalom means wholeness. But the only way we're going to get there is to walk with the sword. And I saw these incredible shoes that each one of us had on, and they were formed by the Word of God that He was revealing to you. And as the Word came into you, it formed your shoes. And it became a weapon for you to walk forward this year. Now, with that, the Lord then said something to me. His healing wing was going to cover us. As we walk forward, I, I've got a new book that's coming out with Alamu Beef 2 called Abiding and what it, the war over the abiding place that we have. But his healing wing was going to cover us, and as we moved forward with that shadow overshadowing that he was going to do with us, our shadow was going to have power. And just like Peter, as people came up to introduce themselves to you this year, you're, you're an EL too. I saw you shake your head. Yeah. What was your name? Elise. See, we got ELs everywhere in here. EL is God. And so with that, Elise, with that shadow you have and that anointing that's coming out of you, anybody that walks into that shadow all of a sudden is going to feel the power of God. That's for every one of us in this room. Now, put your hand on somebody and say, stir that shadow up. That's... See, we carry 
we carry a projection. But this is what he said. He said, every place you walk this year, I am dealing with double-mindedness. I am dealing with double-mindedness throughout the entire world. Because this year will be a year of great division because no longer can I have a people that are double-minded in issues. So I want you to get ready. There's going to be a sorting out of a lot of things. Things you just couldn't bottom line in the last season, you're going to be able to bottom line in this season. And so, and with that, and with the understanding of what we're going into this year, I have to go back to 2019, and I have to show you, really, this whole era that we're living in, starting in September of 2019, is, I, I, I spoke this one other time when I came here, it's an era of war. Now, an era is different than a season. An era is where history is being rewritten. That's what makes it so important that you're here and this gathering is going on because we're in a time that history is being rewritten in a new way and you're part of it. Now look at somebody and say you're a history maker. And see, what this era is about is the blowing breath of God from heaven, the power of the line of the tribe of Judah and his voice. And see, as he's doing that, the heavens are changing. Your atmosphere is changing. The atmosphere of cities are changing. The atmosphere of states are changing. Nations are changing and being realigned. And in the midst of this time, he's sorting things out down here for us. And all of what you're seeing is a necessary division being displayed. We will not be hung between two opinions. The war is over harvest, and the war is over his covenant. And right now, God is blowing in. Started in September 2019. By September 20, at pass by uh, March 2020, uh, Passover, he had pulled us all aside to do Passover. We were in our homes because we were relegated to our homes. And that's really what Passover was about. Go into your home, shut the door, put the blood on the outside of it, and deal with me for seven straight days. And you know what he did? He pulled us all aside, not just Israel this time. He pulled the Gentiles aside also worldwide. And he said, now I'm going to start forming my one new man based upon those who are aligning with me for the future. And so that began in 2020 in this era of war. And every year it's gotten more intense. I love what Chris said, by 2024, get ready for war. It's an intensity of conflict that's happening in the earth because as the Spirit of God blows from heaven, the heavens change. See, a lot of us don't realize, Psalms 102 says, He changes the heavens like an old garment. And all of a sudden, the heavens are changing and things, powers, and principalities that's been held ruling in the heaven are being pushed right down in here in the earth realm with us. And we're seeing what they're doing. And with that, that means the dragon, as it says in Revelation 12, is rising up and he's blowing with his breath. And let me tell you something. The line of the tribe of Judah's 
breath and wind is stronger than any heat the dragon can blow in. But it's an intensity that's going on. And so let me just summarize where we are and how we're each going to have to walk in the midst of chaos. See, the whole world was formed in chaos. Remember, in the beginning was the world, and he spoke, filled with chaos. And he spoke into the chaos, and the chaos began to shift into a new order. So in this season, in this chaos, you're going to have to find your promise for prosperity. You're going to have to move forward with prosperity. You're going to have to move with the mindset of prosperity. And so the other thing I want you to understand is, whoever's running that, y'all help them just keep going with me. Uh, with that, you're going to have to know that this is also the movement of Holy Spirit. This whole era, this whole pay era in Hebrew is about how Holy Spirit is going to be moving in the earth. See, Holy Spirit is the one who breaks the power of the curse. And in the midst of it, you're going to have to know that this is a time where curses are being broken that have been embedded in our bloodlines. Curses are being broken that have been embedded in our cities. Curses are being broken that have been embedded in God's covenant plan. And so with that, it's important that we understand we are in one of the greatest moves of Holy Spirit that we've ever been in. And that move of Holy Spirit is just as important for you to understand. So, here's what I want to talk about tonight. How are you going to know and walk in his timing? If he predetermines your time and your place, how are you going to walk in his timing so you prosper in every step that he's determined for you? Because in the midst of this, you have a journey to your land of prosperity. Look at somebody and say, I am on the journey. See, and in the midst of your journey, with as much intensity that is going on worldwide, you're going to have to determine you're going to keep going. Now, if I would you... If I were you, I would prophesy right now to yourself and say, I will not stop. Will not stop. See, how we speak sets the atmosphere of where we're going. And so when I say we're on this journey for prosperity, what is prosperity? What really are we talking about? I wrote a book called Time to Prosper. But prosperity is... It was God's plan from creation. I'm going to break down chaos. I'm going to speak into it. And then I'm going to give, I'm going to create man out of the dirt, the hummus that remains. I'm going to blow my spirit into man. And then I'm going to show man his boundaries. And I want him to go in there, watch after those boundaries, cultivate those boundaries, and multiply those boundaries. God hadn't changed one bit. Every one of us in this room has a field. Every one of us in this room has a harvest, and he's trying to re-quicken this in our thought processes. And see, the word prosperity is an interesting word because it means God is going to give you a power to go with your prosperity. Prosperity is filled with power. He's going to give you the power to get wealth. This, this isn't just about money. 
It's about favor because really how a person prospers is the path that God determined for them, they walk it out to the end. No matter what that path is, as you walk with him, as he assigns you to do something, he is calling you to prosper. All along the way, the enemy hates the thought of you prospering. He hates the thought of you excelling. He hates the thought of the desire that God had for you coming forth in fullness. And so with that, the thing I want to say to us is understanding our time and walking in his timing is important to the covenant blessings that God has for you. See, our covenant blessings in the earth realm are timed. God timed them. The Lord embedded prosperity in each one of us. See, when he was knitting you together in your mother's womb, he was knitting prosperity into you. It's already in you. But in the midst of that, you're going to have to activate that prosperity. And see, when Yeshua came and he shed his blood for us, He went to hell. He faced off hell for you. Faced off hell. And then overturned the grave, resurrected, ascended into heaven, seated himself. He started giving gifts out to us and saying, everything I've knit in you, if you submit your life and your spirit back to me, I can activate that which I put in you and knit in you before the foundation of the world. Look at somebody and say, you've been around a lot longer than you think. (laughs) But even though you've been around a long time in the mind and heart of God, he sets you in time here. And in this time, he wants to activate that which is in you. He wants to unlock it in a way it's never been unlocked before. He wants you to understand that by his spirit, this is what Hebrews 9 says, flowing through your blood, he can cause an awakening in you. So, and he says this in Galatians chapter 3 verse 9, so all the blessings that he promised to Abraham you can have. See, that's what it means we are grafted in to God's plan. All of those blessings are yours. He promised Abraham land. Say out loud, Lord, I know I got a land somewhere. He promised Abraham that he had a boundary, and within his boundary, all the enemies that were in his boundary were already his. Inside your promise that God gives you, your enemies are inside your promise, but they belong to you. See, that's the promise of Abraham. Abraham, here's your boundaries. Every eye within that boundary, I'm going to give them to you. And then he promised Abraham all these children. And how incredible these children would be. Look at somebody and say, I need that promise for my own house. (laughs) 
I mean, Pam and I, you know, we, we couldn't have children. God healed her. She got pregnant. She stayed pregnant for 10 years. And then the last 40 years of raising those kids, Lord, thank you for the promise you've given us. Now 15 grandkids. Yeah, that's what I say. <laughs> now, your covenant promises are timed. This word was given to us in Hebrew. Abraham, the Hebrew, the one who crosses over, Genesis 14, so that any place you get to that you can't cross over, he's already given you the ability to cross over. And within that, he said, now, I'm going to time this word so you keep this mentality of harvest going in you. It should be a part of your core value. You should be warring against anything that's trying to stop you from multiplying, establishing yourself in your boundary, or having what God intended you to have. That's the promise of Abraham. Abraham, if you'll just leave the form of worship you knew and follow me into a place to learn a new dimension of worship, I'll give you every bit of that. Along the way, I'll make covenant with you. And then I'll give you the land that goes with that covenant. And Anybody that blesses that land will be blessed from now on. Anybody who curses that land, I'm going to deal with them, and they're going to be cursed. Really simple. So see, everything we see happening in the world right now goes back to that covenant plan. And all God said is, if you'll do Shabbat, because I'm going to do Shabbat. Now, if God's going to do Shabbat, it's good enough for you to do Shabbat. That means you're going to do work, do everything you're supposed to for six days. And then on the seventh, you're going to stop, like stopping at a stop sign. And you're going to look back at what you've done the last six days, how the enemy has interrupted that six days. You're going to rest for a moment. You're going to reflect on what has happened in the last week. Then you're going to gain revelation on how you're going to go into next week. See, that's how God operates. I don't get into any legalism. If I have to do Shabbat on Tuesday, I do Shabbat on Tuesday. But I know after six days, I have to stop and reflect. And then he says, I've got this thing called Rosh Kadesh, first fruits. If you'll begin to celebrate first fruits for me. Because see, I'm the God of the universe and I created the moon and the stars. I named all the stars. The sun. And if you will learn when Rosh Kadesh comes, first fruit comes, the new moon comes, and if you'll stop and celebrate and give me, and it says this in Romans, not in the Old Testament. Give me the best of the lump that you have. I'll bless all the rest of your lumps. How many has a few lumps that needs to be blessed? Incredible revelation for the next move of healing in the body of Christ. He said, I'll even fill your barns because if you'll give me the best of the lump you have now, you're giving into your future and 
everything you have, I'm going to start multiplying in a new way. Now, you do that all year long, and his purpose is eventually blessing after blessing after blessing, blessings will overtake you. But you're going to have to understand, monthly, he wants to be celebrated. And then he said, all right, I've gotten you out of Egypt. I've got you stopped here in the wilderness. I want to send you into my promise, but when you get there, you're going to gather together and do three feasts at least. And if you'll always pull aside at those three feast times and bless your harvest, I will carry you from harvest to harvest to harvest. Do you see how far away we have gotten from God's way of prospering us? When I was 18, he revealed that to me. My family was in disarray after having much provision, much land, and God met me in a hospital room, put me in the hospital room with a Pentecostal preacher and he introduced me to someone I did not know named Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit visited me for three straight days, overwhelming me, and said, I can restore all that's been lost, all that's been infected, if you will walk in my timing gave me Proverbs 3 while I was in the hospital. Said, all you got to do is understand first fruits and I'll refill the barns because we had empty barns. See, God has a plan, but it's a covenant plan. And right now, the earth is in conflict over this covenant plan. It's really what it boils down to. And the Lord said, going into this new era, how my people began to rise up is how I will rewrite history in this world. See, we're not just living from day to day watching all the conflict and all the war the way you are experiencing him right now and setting the atmosphere around you is recreating the history of the earth. How you're speaking prophetically, what you're saying, because see, his name is linked with Er, Shaman. It's knit in you. Every time you speak with the authority of his name behind you, all of a sudden goes into the atmosphere around you and the cells have to reframe. Why we're here at an advanced prophetic conference is because God said, I know I can pull a remnant together there at Morningstar that I can equip, I can stir up, and for a time such as this, I can send them out to speak. I can send them out to say what I would have said in every place their feet walk. So this is really what it looks like. See, time is a circle. So starting... At Feast of Tabernacles 2019, God set the first 10 years of the testimony of this era. We're now going into that fifth year. Amazing what the Lord's doing. Every year has prophetic significance. 
Pay means the voice that will be created. How will the voice be heard and how will it represent me? You see why we're having an advanced prophetic conference. You are carrying his voice within you. And look at the war that we're up to. See, last year the war was over supply and divine recovery. How would we divine re divinely recover and how would we unlock supply lines? Aaron, can you show that for me? How can you unlock the supply lines? Notice what happened in this nation over a year ago. All of a sudden, our supply line of the nation got diverted. It had been established. It got diverted into a place where the supply of this nation now is being used wrongly. And God says, now wait a minute. I had plans to unlock supply lines. One of the things we're going to do in a moment is cause the supply line that each one of us is aligned with to get back on target. See, there's power in this room. There's authority in this room. Now we've crossed over and brought our divine recovery, our restoration, into and up to. See, time in linear is circular. It's being stitched on year by year and built within you so you walk with authority. And now it's been aligned, and now here we are in Hebrew 5, 7, 8, 4, the same historical era of pay, but now we're up to 4, which is the door of our future. It means several things. It means you are coming up to the year of going through the door of your future. Nations are coming up to a place of going through their future. In the midst of it, you're entering that door that is linked with what you will expect in the next few years. See, our expectations are linked with our desire. Our desire is linked with God. Our desire has to be refined so our desires and God's desires align, which are all functions of our emotion, and we began to decree that God's desire will manifest. It means you're coming up to a gate, but in this war season, there's war at your gate. See, every gate either has to have a name stamped on it or a name has been stamped on it that says, here's the ruler when you walk through. You can go to gates and colleges and find the name that you're really warring with that's ruling that whole college campus. You can go to a gate of a city and find really what you're going to war with when you go into that atmosphere. And then there's nations. And God always has his prototype. Nation. His first nation. His first fruit nation that he created that all nations will align around. That nation is called Israel. The lion of the tribe of Judah inside a whole nation called Israel. And now we're seeing that nation in one of its greatest conflict in history. We, after being there for 10 years, my kids have friends on the front line, both north and south. 
leadership, friends. And that nation is in its greatest conflict since 1948. Because with it, here's what happens at a gate. And this is the way you want to see the war of your gate. When you look at it, embedded in the gate is this letter called pay. How are you going to speak? at that entry place that I have for you this year so you can go through and into all that I want to give you. I have huge plans for you. We went to Charlotte when we got off the plane. I said, let's ride through Charlotte and look at the gates and see what's happening in this atmosphere called Charlotte. See, this year will be the war at the gates. Next year, whoever makes it through the gate will rule in the harvest. And so, here's three things I want you to remember. Number one, first of all, the Lord has abundant provision for your needs. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, what you need, he already has the provision for. It. Now, you're going to have to come into alignment with that thinking. Number two, the Lord has abundant provision of the spirit of revelation, if you'll ask him for revelation. He'll show you. See, when, when Lucifer, that seraphim angel, tried to rule in heaven and God cast him down, the word of God says what he did was he began to cover over the earth with sound and wealth. He covers over wealth. And why so many of us struggle is you're going to have to uncover the wealth that God has for you that the enemy has covered over. Some of that wealth are incredible resources that have never come into the kingdom. We are a very creative group at our place and we go out into all sorts of places. Of course, I've worked with... Uh, native tribes all over our nation, all of our tribes. We had a big gathering at Passover with all the tribes there. And uh, our first people, because all first are important, my mother was Chickasaw. And with that, we also have teams that go into all sorts of places. We have one team of eight women that go out into all the strip clubs and they're witnessing, and they're sharing. So far, we now are t helping take care of 200 children of those who were in the strip clubs. We, we've, they come back almost once a month from, from going out there. They've either led 18 to the Lord or eight to the Lord, and one week they came back and said, we started having revival in that strip club. And so somebody lambasted me and said, why would you let a team go into a strip club? I said, because some of those dancers in that club need to be dancing before the Lord up here. <laughs> See, a lot of the resources out there that's captured this year, the Lord says, I'm going to show you your gate. Go in and get the resource. And then the Lord has something else. He has an incredible provision of power for you. See, we go from glory to glory, strength to strength, faith to faith. And there is a power in you that he is ready to unlock this year. See, I wanted to be sure we understood what he was doing in us before we try to take on the war of the world. 
Because really, what you see going on in Israel, he's doing in you also. If you're one of his covenant children. When you look at Israel right now, see, Gaza was a part of Judah. And it got totally occupied by the enemy. You know what the Lord says in you? I'm going to take back every place in you that the enemy robbed you in worship. Any place he's removed your ability to worship, I'm coming back. I'm going to rise up within you, and you're going to overthrow him out of you. And I'm going to have a worshiping, triumphant group that are going to worship like we've never seen before. Another thing this whole era means, and it's happening this year, is this is this incredible year where, see, it means we're coming face to face. This whole era, we're coming face to face with God. He's, it's, a, it's a season of visit, visitation. We're coming face to face with ourselves. And then we're coming face to face with our enemies. Another thing that's important to understand that God will require this year of us is, see, if you have been, if you're in relationship with him, if you know him, if you've given your life over to him, if you've made covenant with him, see, all of a sudden you went into an incredible warfare for your portion. And this year, one thing about covenant is God doesn't forget his enemies. He doesn't forget your enemies. And this year is about the covenant enemies that's previously, in previous seasons, that we've had to face, but they won. And they gained ground. And all of a sudden, and they gained, they gained a foothold where they shouldn't have had a foothold. But see, there comes a time where God says, you're going to go back and face those enemies off again. Right there in Joshua chapter 11, Joshua took everything that was supposed to be taken. But you find one little see, sentence in 20, uh, verse 21, 22. The Anakim he took out, but he didn't take them out of Gaza. So all of a sudden, you know what God says? I've got a group. I remember the Anakim when I sent Joshua's group in. And now I'm going to have a group that's going to go in to Gaza. One last thing. The Jebusites. David, you're, bef you're becoming king, but what your first assignment is going to be is when all of Israel makes you king, you've got to figure out how to take out those Jebusites that I told Abraham I had given them and not one soul from generation to generation has taken them out. He said, because see, I have a place where I want my presence to come down. And to do that, you have to unseat the enemy. Now, we're in a very peculiar time. You're one of the keys because God left you here. You have a voice. You have boundaries. You have a power that he can activate. You have access to revelation. And he is ready to call forth Judah to arise and to go forth because the war 
over our boundaries is raging just like you see happening in Israel. Tomorrow I'll share how you will have to dethrone and untangle a threefold cord. And once you do, once we see it done worldwide, once you do it in you, you're going to have the ability to decree it that it will be done. And get ready, the war over that land of Judah that's been taken God is ready to dethrone that giant, starting with each one of us here today. Let's all stand up. Now, I want you to do something. I want you to put your hand right here on your spirit. I want you to ask the Lord to stir your spirit in a new way with power. Just ask him. If you pray in the Holy Spirit, pray in the Holy Spirit. Let the Spirit pray through you. If you don't, just begin to praise him. The Lord said, I am causing a recoining of my people. For the Lord says the enemy has blocked up their ability to multiply in ways that I'm calling them to multiply. But I even say tonight, I am causing that stirring within them and a power that will break through the blockades within their spirits. Now I want you to ask the Lord to for Holy, ask Holy Spirit to manifest in diverse ways inside of you. Now, Father, I loose a diverse manifestation of Holy Spirit in us. Here's the next thing. And I want you to ask him for a spirit of revelation to rest on you. Now, Father, right now, I ask for the spirit of revelation to rest on each one here and each one listening on the web and those that will listen, and I decree that spirit of revelation will uncover what's been covered over. Now, I want you to ask the Lord to unlock a new portion of prosperity within you. Ask him. Don't be afraid to ask him that. Father, where doors of prosperity have been locked up in anyone in this room or anyone under the hearing of my voice, I say those doors are being unsealed tonight. Some of you are going to have new gifts in operation. You're going to have a dream language that you've lost. You're going to have a sound of worship that's been blocked. Now, Father, now I stir up a new prophetic wind in this gathering. I say let the prophetic wind of God blow through this place in a whole new way. Father, we thank you that you are blowing in a new wind for the victories that you have planned in days ahead. Now, I want us to clap our hands and thank God for what he's about to do with you.